Hi, my name's Beth and I'm a second year PhD student in the School of Computing and Engineering at the University of West London and I'm delighted to present my research at this year's MIDL conference as a short paper titled Echocardiographic Phase Detection Using Neural Networks. I'll begin my presentation with my project background, followed by methodology, results and finally a brief conclusion. Lifestyle choices and an ageing demographic have led to an increase in cardiovascular disease, which is now actually the leading cause of death worldwide. There are several imaging modalities for the diagnosis of heart disease. However, the most common is a 2D echocardiogram, which produces a video of the heart called a cine loop. An example can be seen on the screen now. Cardiologists are required to identify two frames of interest from every cardiac cycle contained within the cine loop video. These are end diastole or ED and end systole or ES frames. This manual process is particularly challenging and error prone due to intra and inter observer variability. If it were to be automated, it could lead to improved patient outcomes and save valuable time for, for clinicians. Previous studies have been limited in the fact that they focused on a fixed number of frames from the cine loop video, usually containing just one ED and one ES event. However, in routine clinical practice, cardiologists are required to average measurements over a number of consecutive beats from the same video. So my focus has been on multi-beat phase detection from videos of varying lengths. Three apical four chamber datasets were used in this study. The first, the PACS dataset, was used for training and testing the network. Multi-beat dataset was used just for testing. And finally, the publicly available EchoNet dataset was used for testing and can serve as a benchmark for future studies. The problem was formulated as a regression task and it was decided that labels should decrease during the systole phase and increase during diastole, with end diastole frames always labelled as one and end systole always labelled as zero. In terms of the network architecture, a number of state-of-the-art CNN architectures were experimented with using image net weights. To extract a spatial feature vector from the input, which is then fed into a twice-stacked LSTM network with a regression layer returning a sequence prediction for each of the input frames. A sliding window with a fixed stride of 1 segments the input into chunks of 30 frames. So all of the individual predictions are then averaged and a peak detection algorithm finds the local maxima and minima representing ED and ES frames respectively. Average absolute frame difference notation was used as the evaluation matrix. The average annotation time for each frame of interest was 26 seconds, whereas the automated model took less than 1.5 seconds. The PACS dataset results indicate the error between the operator 1 annotations considered as the ground truth compared with model predictions and those made by human operator 2. Of all the architectures, ResNet 50 with 2 times LSTM demonstrates the smallest error. The model and operator 1 results are within the range of disagreement observed between the two trained human experts. Comparison with previously reported results is difficult because they did all use their own private data sets. However, the model outperforms almost all existing approaches. Though our proposed models remove all of all pre-processing steps, an ability to make predictions on multiple beats from the same video is an indisputable advantage. The figure to the left, bottom left of the screen is an extracted ECG trace from the multi-beat dataset, spanning four heartbeats. The six annotations from five operators are shown as red circles and model predictions are shown as blue squares. The table shows the errors between operator one, predictions made by the model, and the other human operators. Operator one disagreed with themselves on their second annotation attempt, denoted as operator 1b. The model falls between the range of inter-observer variability, demonstrating its reliability compared with human experts. For benchmarking of future studies, the model was tested on the publicly available EchoNet dataset, as already stated. An average absolute frame difference of 2.3 for ED and 3.49 for ES was obtained. This is well within the range of inter-observer variability observed within the multi-beat dataset. So in conclusion, 
The accuracy of the proposed model is similar to that of highly trained experts on previously unseen data sets of a multi-beat nature. However, processing time is significantly quicker. The utilised deep learning approaches could be applied to other echocardiographic views in future studies, not just apical floor chamber. And we have made the multi-beat dataset and corresponding annotations publicly available at the following URL. The full paper of this study has been published recently in Computers in Biology and Medicine. I'd like to thank you for watching my video and welcome any questions you may have.